Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Sephron Olive, and it's time for another dose of daily Amica spoilers, and we've had a ton happen since yesterday, so many new cards are out, so we gotta get right to it. Let's start off with Planeswalker number two from Amica, Liliana Death's Majesty. So yesterday we got to see the new Gideon, super pushed, super low converted mana cost. Liliana Death's Majesty is kinda on the other end of the spectrum, still super powerful, but a little more expensive. So 5 mana, you get 5 loyalty, plus 1 can make zombies and mill yourself, negative 3 reanimates and turns a creature into a zombie, and then negative 7 wraths away all non-zombies, so it doesn't hit your zombie tokens that you make with Liliana, it doesn't hit the creatures that you reanimate with Liliana, so kind of a nice package of synergy there, and I think that really this is kind of the all grown up version of Liliana the Last Hope. So Liliana Death's Majesty does a lot of similar things, graveyard value, protects itself by making zombies, and then a really strong but not immediately game-winning ultimate. So I think that's where I see the kind of the comparison. Of course, it's a lot more expensive, so how it'll play in practice, I think, is more like a Gideon or an Obnixilis. So the comparison to Gideon comes from the making of 2-2 two -two tokens without losing any loyalty. Actually, Liliana is even better in that sense because it's actually gaining loyalty and working towards the ultimate while it's making zombies to chump block. Of course, Liliana is nowhere near as aggressive as Gideon. You're not going to be beating down for 5 and closing out the game quickly, so in that sense, it kind of competes with Obnixilis. List. Like, that's where I see Liliana in standard, as kind of the one of, the two of, is the top end of more controlling and mid-range decks that's going to generate a ton of value and take over the game, and you can imagine some of the things you're getting back. I mean, Verderous Gearhawk, for example, is a great creature to get back from the graveyard, so maybe in a green-black Delirium Shell is kind of the top end of the curve, so... I think that Liliana is going to be fairly powerful in standard. I don't really expect to see any modern play. It's a little too expensive, not that impactful for modern. Although you never know, with doubling season, it does get the immediate ultimate. Uh, so I think it'll be good in standard is kind of the Obnix list, the one of, two of. Where Liliana really shines though, is this is the casual zombie planeswalker. And zombies are about the most popular casual tribe in all of Magic. People love their zombies and all of Liliana's abilities just work so well in a casual zombie deck, so even if Liliana isn't an all-star in standard, it's a great planeswalker because every casual player in the world is going to want their Lilianas to work with their Lords of the Undead and Cemetery Reapers and make zombies and kill their opponent's stuff, so it's a really sweet planeswalker whether or not it actually sees a ton of constructed play, but I think it will see standard play as a top end of the curve and kind of mid-range in control decks. Next on the list, we have our first blue mythic, as foretold, and this card is super crazy. So, it's only three mana, which is pretty efficient, and it kind of lets you cast stuff for free. It takes a while to get going. If you're playing in commander or something, you can always proliferate and whatnot, so you can kind of speed it up a little bit with some unique ways, but basically, once you get counters on it, you get to cast stuff for free each turn. So, it's really like the world's slowest, but also cheapest omniscience. Eventually, you're just going to be casting stuff for free. You don't get the explosive potential of omniscience where you just literally cast your entire deck or something, but casting something for free each turn is really powerful, and the each turn part is really important. Maybe my favorite comparison I've heard for As Foretold so far is Aether Vial for Commander, and that's kind of what it is. So you add a counter to it, you add a counter to it, maybe proliferate or do other things to get the counter, and once you get the counter on it, the each turn part means on your turn, you can cast a creature like Solemn Simulacrum for free, and then during your opponent's turn, you can still cast instants for free, so you get a free counter spell, a free force of will, free card draw, free creature with flash, so you can actually get a ton of value in a four player game if you build your deck right to be able to cast multiple things for free every turn cycle. As far as constructed, I have no idea about standard, it might be too slow, but in modern, people are excited about the possibility of dropping an As Foretold and just immediately casting Ancestral Visions, Living End, Restore Balance. Technically, you can cast these cards that are no mana cost 
with as foretold right away with zero counters so that's a really powerful potential ability is it good enough for modern have to see it dies to abrupt decay dromoka's command there are things that deal with as foretold but the fact that you can just immediately cast these cards makes it pretty scary next on our list we have a red mythic and this one is pretty interesting combat celebrant is very fragile three mana you get a four one it is the exert mythic so whenever you attack with it you can exert it and you get to get another combat phase essentially the problem is you can't use it during the extra attack step so you can't just do this again and again with combat celebrant but basically once each turn if you attack with combat celebrant you can get an extra attack phase so this is the latest in a long line of red cards that give you an extra combat phase we see like Halkite Charger, Aggravated Assault, a Commander, Staple, Lightning Runner hasn't really caught on in Standard, but it could, you never know. The thing about Combat Celebrant that makes it really interesting is it's super cheap. Usually these effects are 5, 6 mana. With Combat Celebrant, you can get this effect for cheap, maybe giving it haste or something to attack right away. The downside is you can't do it over and over again like you can with the other cards. In Modern, you can kind of go infinite with Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, keep making copies of Combat Celebrant. It hasn't been exerted yet so you get another combat phase uh the question is how are you actually going to win the game with that combo i'm sure there's ways of doing it but it's worth being aware of at least this gives you a mono red option to go infinite with kiki jiki mirror breaker in modern next on our list we have a whole bunch of aftermath cards a whole bunch of split cards and these cards i don't know what to say about them on paper they don't look that strong some of them look halfway reasonable, like cut, two mana, four damage to a creature at sorcery speed. That's not a great card, but it's somewhat playable depending on the format. If four toughness is something you really want to kill, I could imagine playing it. The problem is a lot of them just look underpowered, like rags, four mana, all creatures get negative two, negative two. Insult gives one creature essentially double strike and makes it so damage can't be prevented for three mana. So can these cards see constructed play? I'm really not sure. I just, I don't see it on Paper. Maybe the ability to have a free card in your graveyard, if you can mill these or something, will make it worthwhile and make them constructed playable, but right now I'm leaning towards these being probably very good in limited just because they're card advantage. Even though their effects aren't insane, the fact that you get a free card in your graveyard to use later is going to be really good in a limited format, but I can't see it in constructed. Uh, the rest of them, maybe the two most competitive of them actually, are Dusk to dawn and mouth to feed so i'm still not sold on these in constructed but i could imagine a deck maybe an aggro deck like mardu vehicles wanting to dusk away the, its opponent's board of big creatures and then get back a bunch of their toolcraft exemplars and stuff with dawn mouth to feed at least it gives you a three three for three and then maybe generate some card advantage when the game goes long we also have a new artifact a legendary artifact throne of the god pharaoh in this interestingly, was actually going to be in the most recent Commander decks, but it got pushed to Amonkhet, apparently because it's so much on flavor, and this card is pretty interesting. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the number of tap creatures you control, which can do a couple of interesting things. In Standard, you have Inspiring Statuary, so get a bunch of artifact creatures, tap them to cast something, drain your opponent for like 5 or 10 damage, closes out the game quick. You also have improvised cards like Maverick, Thopterus, and so forth that kind of do that naturally, so there's some cool ideas there with Improvise and Artifacts, and then in modern you have elves which kind of can tap all its creatures anyway they either tap naturally like elvish mystic or you have heritage druid so it's pretty easy to play a bunch of elves get them all tapped and just drain your opponent out of the game of course it's going to be awesome in casual play as well token decks and commander and so forth so i don't know my initial reaction was probably an against the odds card for constructed like standard and modern but some people have been saying they think it's better than that so we'll see where it turns out but definitely an all-star in go wide token swap Warm decks in casual and commander formats. Moving down the list, we have Regal Caracal, which is our first ever cat lord. Pumps up all of our cats, gives us two cats, which are one ones with lifelink, also gives all of our cats lifelink. So basically, for five mana, you end up with seven power and toughness, all in the form of cats. It's kind of like Cat Goat Ranger was the first thing I thought of. A reasonable five mana body that also gives you more bodies that are pretty good. So, 
I don't know. Can this see constructed play? Maybe? We've seen cards like this before, but we've come a long way from Cloud Goat Ranger being a constructed staple, so I don't know. I don't think we have enough cat synergies to really matter in constructed. We do have Felidar Guardian. There are a lot of cats through Magic's history, but is there enough to really make cat dot deck? Uh, maybe. It'll definitely see homes in cat commander decks. Unfortunately, it's not a legend itself, so you can't play it. That would be pretty sweet. So, I don't know. Regal Karakul is a card I'm glad exists, and I think is really sweet. I'm guessing it's not quite where it needs to be for Constructed, but it'll be a ton of fun for cat decks in Commander and on Kitchen tables. Next we have Curator of Mysteries, which is a really pushed looking flyer. 4-4 four, four, flying for 4 gives you a payoff when you cycle, you get to scry 1, and it cycles for 1 mana. So one thing you'll learn about cycling, if you haven't played with it before, is when a card cycles for 1 mana, it's really low opportunity cost to put in your deck, because if it's ever not good, you can always get rid of it and trade it for a new card with cycling. So if there is a Drake Haven cycling dot deck deck that exists in standard, I'm pretty sure Curator of Mysteries will be a huge part of it. The downside is Heart of Kirin, 2 mana, trades with it. I'm a little bit hesitant to play expensive flyers that trade with a 2 mana play, so we'll see what happens, but I think it's definitely part of Cycling.deck. Maybe it can be more for that. If it wasn't for a card like Heart of Kirin, a 4-4 four, four flyer for 4 is actually pretty on curve. Glorybound Initiate is our aggressive white 2 drop of the day, so a 3-1 for 2 is playable. When you exert it, it becomes a 4-4 four, four attacker and gains lifelink, which is pretty absurd. The question is, how is exert going to work in practice? I don't think you can play this if your plan is to just attack, exert it, have it not untap the next turn. That's not going to work. A 4-4 four, four lifelink attacker every other turn is not good enough. It's just too hard to control. On the other hand, always watching is a card, and a really powerful card, so there could be an aggressive humans list, or even an aggressive exert list, where you can use always watching to give all of your exert creatures vigilance and beat your opponent it down. So that's what I'm looking at. I think it's going to be worth trying at least. Is it better than the artifact based aggro decks we already have? I don't know, but the synergy between Exert and always watching, pumping and giving vigilance, I mean that gives you a 5-5 five, five lifelink attacker on turn 2. That's a pretty absurd combo for standard, and attacks through anything, swings the race in your favor, so I'm really interested in trying to curve out Glorybound Initiate into always watching. Outside of that, I'm not really sold on it. Alright, getting down to the commons and uncommons, going through these quickly, even though they're pretty good, Magma Spray, important removal spell because it hits Scrap Heap's ground your primarily. And then Scarab's Feast is the best graveyard hate spell we've seen in a long time for standard. It's not insane by any means. You just exile three cards from a graveyard, which gets rid of Scrap Heap Scroungers, gets rid of reanimation targets, gets rid of embalmed creatures. What it doesn't really do that well is stop Delirium if your opponent can just stock up their graveyard really big, but getting rid of like multiple prized amalgams or Scrap Heap Scroungers is a big deal. Plus, like we were talking about with the Sphinx, cycling for one mana means the opportunity cost is so low, you bring it in from your sideboard, eh, you don't really need it, cycle it away, get a better card. We also got the rest of the new cards from the Planeswalker decks, not really much to say about them, I mean, they tutor for the Planeswalkers, they do some stuff, nothing constructed worthy here, and then a few limited commons and uncommons. Manglehorn might be fringe constructed playable. It's kind of like a Reclamation Sage that only hits artifacts, and taxing opponents' artifacts by making them come into play tapped could be pretty good depending on the meta. The rest of the cards, definitely just limited only, but some big green things, some cool creature types, so worth mentioning them briefly. And that's been our daily Amonkhet spoilers for today, so what do you think? What do you think about Liliana Death's Majesty? Is that going to be a standard card or just a casual zombie card? How good is it? better than Omnixilis, on par with Old Gideon. I don't think it's that good, but kind of close, maybe? How about As Foretold? What do you want to play for free? Can that see play in Standard and Modern, or is it just the ether vial of Commander formats? What else are you excited about from today? Make sure to let me know in the comments. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. 
And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.